So you're in the countryside for several days and have been resting in your wooden house. In the morning, you wake up feeling as if you're floating away somewhere. You look out the window and see everything's moving. You run out of the house, but after a single step, your foot sinks slightly into the ground. There was no rain, the ground isn't wet, but it feels like you stepped on a soft bed. You see your own and your neighbor's wooden houses somehow carried away. The villagers don't understand what's happening. You meet one of your friends and he says his house has disappeared completely, as if it was stolen by someone. You remember his expensive red brick house and can't imagine anyone taking it away. Next, you notice all the floating houses are wooden. The others, made of bricks, have also disappeared. Right in the village center, something like a mudslide is formed, pulling everything around into it. You try to run, but the ground seems to swim under your feet. It doesn't look like an earthquake. It feels as if you're on a huge raft in the middle of the sea. At first, it's difficult for you to keep balance, and you fall a couple of times. Several more mudslides are forming around. You see cars ahead, run to them to call for help, and find the road's gone. You run up to a car in which the young woman's listening to a radio. All channels broadcast the same message. For some reason, rocks have disappeared all over the world. Now, imagine that you're a professional mountaineer climbing a steep mountain for several hours. At last, you've reached the top. You raise your hands and shout with delight. A second later, the cry of joy turns into one of horror. The mountain dissipates right beneath you. You don't believe your eyes, but you're falling. Fortunately, right into some water. You rise up from the deep and see a sandy beach where the mountain was just moments ago. You swim to the shore, but it seems to be carried away. The sand hasn't gone because it's made of pieces of quartz, not stone. Not only rocks on the surface disappeared, but tectonic plates too, which made the whole landscape to change. Everest becomes no more than a low hill of snow and ice. Rocks are disappearing all over the world, causing global calamities. There are no more hills on the planet. If you want to see the world from high up, go to Antarctica and climb a huge glacier there. Any houses built of concrete, brick, or clay are dissipating since those materials are made of crushed rock. All over the world, humanity loses monuments. Modern art exhibitions and historical museums are losing their stone and clay exhibits. Rich art lovers bought stone sculptures at auctions for millions of dollars yesterday. And this morning, they woke up with nothing, not even a roof over their heads. Jewelry made from precious stones has gone. Only metals remain. Before the incident, the main reserves of metals were hidden in the rocks. So now they lie on the ground or deep in the soil. You can walk down the street and find pieces of gold, silver, and other valuables just lying around. But people aren't into wealth right now. They run away from their homes, leaving the city's remains. All roads and skyscrapers are ruined. Metal fittings and glass fall to the ground. Huge mud vortices form all over the world and pull everything into themselves like black holes. Wood becomes the most valuable resource. People frantically cut down trees and build wooden houses. Scientists around the globe are dumbfounded. They can't work in new conditions. Labs and research centers are destroyed, and a lot of scientific stuff is buried under the rubble. Someone comes up with a hypothesis that the molecular composition of rocks suddenly changed and they vanished into thin air. Several months have passed. People are getting used to the new way of life. There are no metal processing plants, so everyone learns to handle iron, aluminum, and other metals by themselves. Metal detectors easily find these materials underground. Sometimes you have to dig a lot to get it. Construction rules change. No one builds concrete foundations anymore. Everyone strives for ease and practicality. People live in small wooden houses and insulate them with glass, cotton, and wool. During all this time, you have developed an incredible sense of inner balance. It's hard to knock you down because frequent earthquakes give you a lot of practice. Also, you feel the slightest ground movements. You always travel light and can recognize a coming mudslide in advance. To prepare for the coming winter, you go on a hike to get metal, trees, and sand for insulation. Soon, you realize you won't need it as you feel the heat coming directly from under the ground. The heat from the core now reaches the surface since a thick layer of rocks disappeared. Sooner or later, the soil will be so hot that it will be difficult to walk on it barefoot. Snow falls, but it melts before hitting the ground. 
The air warms up so much in winter that people walk in light clothes. In a few hundred years, our planet will lose huge water reserves. The liquid will evaporate, condense into huge clouds, and rain down, then evaporate again. There will be less and less water. The heating of the ocean will cause the extinction of photoplankton and algae, which provide the Earth with much of the oxygen. Next, the trees will dry out because of lack of moisture. Or the world ocean will cool the core, and then will lose the Earth's magnetic field. In this case, the work of the atmosphere will be disrupted, and we won't be able to protect ourselves from cosmic radiation. In any case, humanity will need to prepare to move house. Without stone, it's difficult to mine metal and build spaceships, but we've got some advantage too. Thanks to the open access to the Earth's heat, humanity receives unlimited supplies of energy. From the uncovered metals, people build simple machines that can find and mine even more metals. Then more complex mechanisms appear. The scale of work is expanding, and all this is thanks to the Earth's inner energy. Work on the creation of a new wooden metal civilization is in full swing seven days a week. Many lakes and rivers around the world have completely dried up. The lack of water is replenished by the glaciers melting, but not for long. The weather is getting warmer every month, and the ground becomes more unstable. Several house security systems to avoid mudslides become very popular. If a mudslide begins under the house, a special device concentrates all the heat inside in a single point and creates hot airflow. Next, the roof opens and a huge canvas ball is released, which is then filled with the collected heat. In a few seconds, the ball rises into the sky and lifts the whole house with its inhabitants. Sometimes, when too many mudslides occur, you can watch thousands of flying houses fill the sky. Each dwelling has a steering wheel that can control the flight and choose the direction. When the house arrives to a safe area, it slowly lands, the hot airflow is cut off, and the balloon folds into the roof. It's getting too hot on Earth. It's hard for people to live here. Fortunately, this will end soon. People have created technology that can send you on a journey through space. No, it's not a huge arc. People couldn't unite on one place to build it, as the landscape of the planet is always changing. Instead, hundreds of millions of houses are flying into space. They're equipped with super drives, oxygen, food supplies, and solar panels. All houses are connected into a single network, and people maintain communication. If something breaks in one house or it runs out of fuel, the rest will come to help. People leave Earth's orbit and watch as their home planet slowly melts. It resembles an egg that has been boiled for too long. Streams of magma pour out of the soil, lightning lashes out of the black clouds. Our planet becomes as hot as it was at the time of its birth. Fortunately, you won't have to fly far. Humans are going to colonize Mars.